are you addicted to astrology not in a good way but in a way that's unhealthy for you do you need an astro detox so today you have 10 signs you need an astro detox and if three or four or five of these are happening then you most likely need an astro detox and the first one is the most important if you have this that's it you need even if you don't have the other nine it doesn't matter <laughs> All right, so astrology is meant to help us know ourselves. It, it's not meant to punish us, okay? So therefore, the first one is, of course, if you are checking your horoscope 24 by 7, not like literally, but every time you are thinking, okay, this is there, that is there, this will happen, that will happen, you know, my planet is exalted here, it's debilitated there, what will happen in D9, it's in Multricorn, in D10, it's in uh, uh, Badakhstan, this will happen, that will happen, kya hoga? So, if this is going on, so, what happens is, you are doing everything externally, what is going on in your head, so, so it is not healthy, basically, okay, now, you can think of astrology. There's nothing wrong with the deal. But if you're only thinking of your chart, that's the problem, okay? Problem is not astrology. Problem is you, your own, your yourself, your own thoughts, okay? Your own, your own chart, thinking about that 24 by 7. So, that's very problematic, okay? And if you continue to do this, the other nine will follow. That is why I said, if you have one, then you need a detox, okay? Number two. Waiting for a good dasha to come. So, suppose now your uh, eighth house dasha is active, planet is in the eighth. Let's take very simple examples, no complications. And you have seen my video on the eighth house, eighth house is the graveyard. <laughs> Ignoring everything else, okay, you ignore everything else and you have just seen that video. So, then what happens is, oh, this person said, you know, Babajit Kalita from Germany. From exotic astrology, and eighth house is graveyard, so everything is doomed, right? So suppose your next Antar Dasha is coming after two years, and you are thinking, oh, that's like sun in the tenth house. So suppose you have sun in the tenth house, and that Antar Dasha is coming, okay? And now you are running which Dasha? Venus. <laughs> and your Venus is in eight, so now you're like, oh, anyways, this Dasha is gone, you know? So I just pass on the time that is there, you know? I'll just let it go. I'll, I'll not do much. You know, anyways, this is gone. You know, so, very bad attitude. Okay. You should fight with whatever placements you have. You should not just leave it. Number three, maybe this is more prominent in people these days. You are not waiting for a good dasha, maybe, but you are waiting for a good transit to come, right? Oh, I will focus on my profession. Next year, Jupiter will enter my 10th house. I will focus on my profession then. This year, anyway, let it go. What? It will happen. Nothing. Push the all. The 8th, 9th, these are all useless houses. You know. Ultimate money is there in the 10th and 11th. So, let Jupiter enter there. You know. Guru will enter and like flood my life with all the luxuries. Okay. Well, guess what? It may not. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> may or it may not. Uh, but nonetheless, we should not keep sitting and expecting that it will happen. So, it's applicable for a good dasha and a good transit, always. Both actually. Number four, you are only focusing on your negative placements. Okay. So, suppose you have Venus in sixth. You are like, oh, anyways, my marriage is doomed. Okay. So, you're going on seeing videos. You know, Venus is in sixth. What happens? Venus is in debility. This will happen. Venus is exalted in D1. You know, I've been debilitated here. Multricon here, this, that, oh my god, my married life is ruined, you know, what will happen, I cannot, I can never have a happy married life, you know, my love life is gone, it's gone for a toss, okay, and my martyr is in 12th, you know, my god, I am losing money all the time, you know, what will happen, so, instead of improving, you are only thinking uh, about yourself as a victim, okay, so, that's not good, okay, please don't do it. Number five, you are high on the, this is on the other side. So, number four is you are focusing on your negative placements. And sometimes, what you do is you are hyper, you are hyper excited about your good placements. Like, for example, you have a Mahapurushyo. So, now calculate how many people have Mahapurushyo. Just calculate, okay. I mean, if you, if you, if you use probability and try to find out, what is a Mahapurushyok? How many people can have it? 
Oh my God. There are millions of people who have Mahapurush Yog. Because Mahapurush Yog is by, you know, five planets other than Sun, Moon, or Rahu, Ketu. And they should have, they need to be in own sign, Multrikon or exaltation. So just imagine how many people will have and they have to be in Kendra, of course. So imagine how many people will have. Okay. So now you are waiting. My uh, uh, Shani is in 10th house in Capricorn. So Shani Dasha will come and make me a millionaire. Okay. And, and what I will do nothing. Now, what if the Nakshatra Lord of Saturn is in the 12th? Then you may lose money. Okay. So nonetheless, you are so, you are hyper excited, you know. Oh yeah, this planet is like excellent, you know. Like for example, suppose you have Saturn in 10th house in Libra and you know, you have uh, like, you know, Venus in the 8th, maybe, you know, whatever, good or bad dignity. <clears throat> or anywhere, you know, any Mahapurush, anywhere, you just take any example. So then you say, oh yeah, actually then my career is great, you know, but my married life is is going to be screwed up, okay. So what you do, you are only focusing on your career, 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 and you, you are neglecting your marriage or, you know, you don't uh, feel like getting married or you are like, that that's anyways a dark area for me, right? So, of course, everybody will have some bright and dark areas. I'm not saying everybody will have all good areas. But if you are like, you know, hyper-focused on one, one area just because you have some uh, apparently fancy placements, then that's trouble, okay? Uh, so, then, then what happens is your overall life will be very imbalanced, okay? Now, what is the next sign that you need an astro detox? Hmm, trying to justify your bad behavior. Oh, what to do? You know, anyways, Mercury is retrograde. <laughs> right? Mercury is retrograde, so I will anyways do mistakes, right? But I was the one who did it. My Venus is retrograde. You know, I will not have good relationships. Or I've seen this using when the people in 2024 have taken this to the next level. They say, oh, my Venus is retrograde. You know, so I will anyways meet cheat. Cheaters, thugs, crooks, criminals, and liars, you know, when it comes to relationships. So, I only meet toxic people where because my Venus is retrograde. Well, guess what? It is your karma. So, you have screwed it up yourself, all right? So, it's not other people can come, but why do you let them inside your life, okay? So, that's your fault and you have to take responsibility for that. You may not like to hear this. Nobody likes all this, but still I would say, okay? So, therefore... You need to understand that whatever is there, affliction, retrogression, combustion, whatever, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, whatever, it is all yours. And you are responsible for it, okay? Number seven, you're, you, you are seeing, you know, planets and horoscopes in your dreams. Now, many people will get offended when I say this. Now, is it wrong to see your planets, you know, and all this horoscopes in dreams? Well, it's not wrong, but if you are doing it to such an extent that, you know, you are only seeing them in a negative way, oh my God, you know, I mean, I know people who have literally seen, who have been seeing horoscopes and the planets have been moving inside the horoscopes in, you know, 6th house, 8th house, 12th house, because they have seen so many videos on those thanas, you know, like, 8, 12 hours a day they are seeing. So in their mind, you know, the mind is creating imaginary horoscopes with you know, five planets, you know. There are people who I know who have mailed me by saying that I am concerned that my son or my daughter will have planets in Dusthanas because I am getting dreams of bad horoscopes, okay. Now that could happen. If your karma is that way, that could happen, certainly. But if you are imagining all this and seeing all this in dreams, you need an astro detox, okay? <laughs> Number eight, you are unable to sleep because of astrology. So you are getting insomnia. So you want to sleep, but you are seeing astrology videos. It's like you know, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. You are seeing astrology videos. Somewhere some astrologer says something good. You are like, oh, you are hooked. You know, you are seeing like 50 videos. Somewhere somebody says bad. You are seeing 500 videos, okay? Oof, this is difficult, okay? So if you are getting sleepless nights, <laughs> then you need an astro detox, okay? Number nine, you cannot act normally because of a bad dasha or a bad transit or a bad placement. What is this? So suppose 
your guru has transited in the sixth house. Let's take an example. Okay. Jupiter has entered your sixth house as per Senate. So now what is happening? You are going and meeting somebody for marriage, some proposal, and you are like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know, but how can this person be nice? You know, my guru is transiting in sixth. You know, maybe there is something fishy there. So you are trusting your horoscope and planets and transits more than your gut feeling and your own sense of self, which is the ultimate reflection of the horoscope, actually. So if you are doing this, then uh, you certainly need an astrology talks because now you have you have forgotten what is astrology. Astrology is not just your know, numbers, planets, signs, and all this. You know, it it is actually humans. It's like the 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 final manifestation of the chart is the human. Now, of course, it can happen if your Rahu is transiting in six. You know, you, you can meet cheaters, okay? Or even if it's transiting fifth or seventh or eighth, you could meet cheaters. You know, when you go to uh, see somebody for marriage or when you're going for dating. Uh, but it does not mean that every person that you meet is a cheater, okay? It is a possibility, but it depends on overall things. But Another example, if your moon is afflicted or in debility or in some bad house, in Dustan, then anything your mother says, you feel, oh, anyways, you know, this this crooked lady is, you know, my moon, you know, she has come with all the bad karma of my previous lifetimes and now this lady who is uh, my mother will punish me, okay? Oh, this crooked narcissistic, you know, this lady is because... She will smash all my uh, good. Whatever is good in the chart, this mother, my mother will smash it. Okay, there are people who think like this. There are people who say, oh, anyways, my son is in debility. You know, so my father, relationship my father will, with my father will never improve. Okay, so therefore, if you are taking things beyond what it should be, then you need an astro detox. Okay. Last but not the least, you judge others as per their horoscope. No, your horoscope. <laughs> this is bizarre. I mean, how can you judge others as per your chart? You know, maybe with their chart. No, even judging others as per your chart. So, for example, if, as I said, you know, if you are, suppose your moon has transited into your eighth house. Okay, and then your mother says something. Says something. So, you will think, you will think, oh, actually, you know, she's the moon, she's the mother, so she's behaving like this, uh, eighth house, okay. Or suppose moon, moon goes for only two, two and a half days. Suppose take an example of Venus. Your Venus has transited to 12th house in your chart, and your spouse tells you, okay, uh, let's go for a vacation, you know, maybe whatever, okay. And then you'll be like, oh, this uh, person will be the cause of losing money now, okay. So you are basically, what you are doing is, you you are thinking everything in literal terms. You know, like for example, Venus as the planet does not literally show your spouse. So for example, if your Venus transits in 10th house of your chart, it does not mean literally your husband or wife will get a promotion. It does not mean that. But what happened is you have taken things literally, okay? And which is because of your... Uh, incomplete knowledge of astrology okay you maybe you are not learning astrology from the right source so because of that you are uh, doing all these crazy things with yourself and others will tell you that you know uh, you 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 are not normal okay so this is bonus number 11 if people are telling you that you have become abnormal because after learning astrology you are not normal we cannot interact with you anytime somebody says you bring astrology you say oh actually you know but I, I know you, 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 you will not get good things now. You, 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 you have this placement. You, 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 you will get play, uh, this after. Uh, you, you, you will get after one year. Okay, you speak like this, uh, then uh, you need an astro detox. All right. So identify yourself and other people in your surroundings and uh, share this video with them. All right. Thank you so much. Please take care. Jai Siaram.